What is going on guys welcome back in today's video we're going to discuss webhooks and we're also going to learn how to implement the idea of a webhook using flask in python so let us get right into it All right, so we're going to talk about webhooks in this video today. And in order to understand them easily, we're going to think of them as a sort of reverse API, because the basic idea of interacting with an API is quite simple. Whenever we want to get something, we need to first ask for it, we need to send a request in order to get a response, the API is never going to contact us without us contacting the API first, the API is not going to proactively send us information, we need to ask for the information, and we're going to get a response, hopefully, to our request. Now with webhooks, we reverse that process webhooks are event driven, and we have the server notify us via a so called callback, which is a function or an endpoint. And basically, when something happens, when some event occurs on the server, it's going to call our callback function, and we can react to it without having to ask first, if something happened, or uh, what the value of something is, or if something has changed, we can just get notified roughly in real time, by using this structure of having a callback function, the web server calling this callback when something happens. That's the basic idea of webhooks. And we're going to implement this here in a simple example using flask. And then we're going to in the second part, look at a useful uh, example of this in real life or in, in, in the digital life, but in a real uh, use case uh, from GitHub. So what we want to do first, if you don't have it already, we need to install flask. So we need to say pip install flask. And once this is installed, we can open up a new file. And let's call it main py. We're going to just build a simple flask application. So we're going to say from flask import flask with a capital F and we're going to also import request. And then we're going to say that we wanted to find an app, which is going to be flask underscore underscore name underscore underscore. And then we're going to define a simple endpoint, we're going to say at app dot route. And we're going to call this now webhook callback or something like that. And we're going to allow for post requests here. And the function is going to be called just hook. And the basic idea is that we want to just print here on the server side, the data that was passed to the request. And then we want to also return something like Hello World, for example. And then we also want to first of all, let's keep the conventions. And then we also want to have this main section here, if underscore underscore name underscore underscore equals main with underscores, then we're going to say app dot run. And um, what we want to do now here, this is just a very simple, trivial example, this is now our hook, this is our callback function, you could say. Um, and the basic idea is that when something happens on that server on that resource, what we want to do is we want to get notified on this hook. So this function should be called when something happens, you have to think about this as two separate entities, we're going to do everything here now on localhost. Uh, in the second example, we're going to use GitHub. But the basic idea is that this server that's somewhere else, instead of us having to ask it about the state of the current situation, or if something happened or not, it's going to just call the function that we have here on our system. And our system is going to automatically react to it without having to ask if something happened. So instead of saying request, and if request is this, then this and otherwise do this and then request every five seconds or every five minutes, we can just wait and and get notified by the server uh, via this callback function. So we're going to simulate this here with another script, we're going to call send underscore request py. Here, we're going to import the requests module, which you also have to install, by the way, if you don't have it. So just pip install requests, in case you don't have it. And then we can say here that r, which is our response is going to be equal to requests dot post request. And we're going to define a URL in this case as localhost, I think port 5000 is the default, and then webhook callback was the mapping. And we're going to just post on this URL, and then we're going to print the response. And we're going to run the server here. 
it's running on port 5000. And then we can run this here, you can see we get a 200 response, which is basically success. And here we can see we get an empty byte string because we didn't provide any data. Um, and I think we should also be able to just not text, but content to just see what yeah, we can get hello world here as a result. That's the basic idea. So this would be the server, some stuff is happening here, it's working all the time, and then some event occurs. And what we do is we call this URL here, and we react to it here immediately, we don't have to contact this uh, application here, we can just uh, buy this application calling this um, endpoint, we know that something happened, we know that uh, and maybe we pass some data to it as well, we can also pass some parameters, then we know that something happened, we can react to it in that function. So the whole logic for reacting to events is happening in that function here. Alright, so now we're going to take a look at an example of using webhooks that's actually useful. And this is GitHub. GitHub allows us to create webhooks for our repository so that we can react to events. And in order to do that, we can just go to a repository, then we can go to settings. And on the left side, we can click here on webhooks. And then we can just create new webhooks. And of course, since GitHub is not running on localhost on our computer, but it's running on the internet, we need to provide an endpoint that's actually accessible to GitHub. So GitHub is going to send a post request, and it cannot send that post request directly to our localhost, it has to have a public IP address, a URL or something that it can access. And in order to have such a thing, you can either use a server that you already have. Um, you can also use a website called webhook.site, which is just a public website. So you can uh, you get your unique URL here, and then you can just tell GitHub to send a request to this URL, then you're going to be able to analyze the um, post request in the browser. However, if you want to actually process it on your site using a Python script, you want to run this locally, or as I said, on your own server. And one way to do that, at least for testing purposes is ng rock. So you can just install ng rock using the zip file here on ng rock.com slash download for Windows, or on Windows, you can also use the Choco installer. Um, I have ng rock on my system already. And if you want to run it, what you have to do is you have to create an account, you go to ng rock, you create an account, you get an auth token, then you go ng rock config, uh, at dash auth token and then the token I have a video on ng rock, which is now uh, which is why I'm going to not go um, through the whole process now. But once you have everything set up properly, and it's really not too difficult to do, you just open up the command line, uh, I'm going to navigate now to actually it doesn't matter where I navigate, I'm going to just say ng rock, HTTP port 5000. And what that basically means is that now port 5000 is going to be accessible. So this URL here that I have is going to forward the requests to localhost 5000. And what I can now do is I can go to webhooks, I can, um, first of all, let me just run this again, because we are printing the data of the request. So we're going to see what happens here. So I'm running the flask server now on port 5000, I'm running ng rock. And now I can go to GitHub and I can create a new webhook. Now I need to uh, log in here. And then I can just provide this ng rock URL, I can say that I want to have uh, a JSON object, I'm not going to provide a secret here, I'm going to enable SSL. And I want to have um, what do I want to be notified? Uh, in, in what cases in what events do I want to be notified. So first of all, I can say only when something is pushed. I can also say in all cases, or I can select individual cases, like for example, when the repository gets a new issue, or when issues get edited, or when the repository is forked, or when uh, something is pushed, or when I think there's something when a repository is start, we're just going to go now with everything. So whatever happens, we want to be notified. And I'm going to say also it's active. So I can add the webhook now. And this webhook um, is essentially um, going to now send a ping. And you can see here that it actually got Oh, the problem is, of course, that it sent a ping to the wrong um, to the wrong endpoint, because the endpoint is obviously, let me just make it simple here and remove that. So let me just change how this works. We're going to just take the root URL, I'm going to run this again. Um, and we're going to go again here, we're going to update it again. 
Now, I don't think that we're going to get the ping again because it only sends the ping one as far as I know. Uh, but we can do something like start a repository now. And then you can see that I got a post request here. And if I go into PyCharm, you can see that I get this JSON object um, with the action it was taken. So we have a bunch of information here. Of course, if you want to do something reasonable with it, you have to get the information that you're looking for. You have to change stuff and stuff like that. Uh, uh, but essentially what you can see here is that the repository uh, was start. And you can also see config files will start and so on. We just get this information as a JSON file. Now I can also unstart the repository, which is going to cause uh, probably another request. I think it cost another request. And probably here we have now start at null. Um, probably we have some field that says that we that we unstart. I didn't look into the specifics of the JSON response, but that's the basic idea. You can use GitHub to send requests to your endpoint, to your, uh, to your uh, callback function uh, in case certain events happen. And then you can react to it. You can say, okay, when someone starts my repository, get the username, store it, look them up on social media, whatever you want to do, right? Uh, I don't think that that's necessarily the most intelligent use case, but that's something you can do. You can also say, okay, when someone forks the repository, keep track of it or something like that. Um, you can be creative here. But that is just one example of using webhooks. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.